the first step of that framework is the yes. And the first step is to be aware that of the different styles of feedback, not everyone likes their feedback, like what you were saying, the same way. And it's worth carving out time, right? During one-on-one -on -one meetings to discuss how they prefer to receive it to begin with. Yeah, having that meta conversation around how we prefer to receive and to give feedback is super duper important because it could be that maybe I don't have a problem with the feedback, like the actual content, but I have a problem with the way it's being delivered. So if we can just clear that out of the air, we're gonna in, in, increase our chances of success pretty substantially. And then the second letter A is it acknowledge, like what you were saying, those power dynamics, right? That there's probably gonna be a power imbalance and feel, and then feedback can feel somewhat threatening and you need to reassure them, right? That there's room for improvement and make it a safe environment. Yes. And one thing that I want to emphasize around that is I don't think it's fair or reasonable for leaders to expect that in relatively new, if, if I'm new to my position or if I'm new to a relationship with somebody who has less power than me, I don't think it's reasonable for me to expect that they're going to give me that much honest and negative feedback. What generates the trust over time, what builds the trust over time is action. And also, and also so doing certain things that is like implementing the feedback and also not retaliating because that's, that's what people are afraid of. So if I can show over time that I am, that you, the feedback that you share with me is something that I'm actually listening to and implementing, that's important. And there's another piece of this that, that often, that doesn't often get discussed. And that is, I believe that there's value in also saying what feedback I'm not going to be implementing. So you gave me X, Y, Z feedback. Thank you. And here's what I'm going to do. And here's what I'm not going to do and why. And what that does is it signals, because if, if I just ignore it, then maybe they think I haven't heard them. So what I'm saying is I've heard you. I understand why you gave me this feedback. And for these reasons, I'm either unable to or unwilling to implement this feedback. That's another important piece of uh, building trust when it comes to giving and receiving feedback. Well, that's a great tip because I don't hear that very often. And that takes courage on the individual's part to say that because some people feel like I'm just, I'm not going to use the feedback. I'm just not going to tell them though of why I'm not using it. I'm just going to ignore it. And then hopefully everything will be okay. But you're right. It, it feels to the person giving that feedback that you're really not listening to them. And maybe they're not going to give you feedback in the future because you didn't enact upon it and they don't know why you didn't, right? Exactly. And I hear this a lot too with feedback from senior leaders, right? We talked about feedback on, on the employee and the person that has more power than them, but I hear this a lot from senior leaders that it's hard to get honest feedback. So I love that piece of advice you gave about over time, you have to prove through your actions and form a trusting relationship if a senior leader really wants to get honest feedback from their subordinates. Yes. So let's move on to the next letter, and that's going to be the I. So it's noting the impact of the behavior you're looking at. So we tend to judge ourselves based on our intentions, um, which is common to everyone, I think, but everyone else based on their actions. So, and therefore, feedback is easily greeted with, but I didn't mean to. And what one leader told me one time is, you know, Charles, you don't get credit for your intentions. You get credit for your actions. So keep that in mind. I like that phrasing. I like that phrasing. Yeah, it's it, it, that's it, it, what you get credit for. Exactly. It's it's like whoever I'm whoever I'm working with having the feedback conversation around couldn't care less what's going. Like, I mean, yeah, okay. There, there's room for intent there. It's not that it doesn't matter at all, but it's but what's like front and center first and foremost, and a lot more challenging to deal with is is the impact. And then all of any, any disconnect between intention and impact is really for me to deal with internally, or maybe with a, with a friend or a peer that I, that I have relatively equal power with. So, you know, this was really, I got this feedback. It was really hard for me and I just need to vent about this, but not, not in the relationship with the person who has less power. You, you can end up doing damage if you're just like, you know, but I didn't mean to. Right. And the final uh, part of it, E, is empower the employee to succeed in addressing what you're asking them to address, offer solutions, provide accountability, but more importantly, be a supportive partner, not a disciplinarian. Yes. And that's in the context if I'm the one who's giving the feedback. The way that our system is set up is scarcity is front and center. There's never enough time. There's never enough money. There's, always, there's too much to do. And we, none of us is good enough to do the job. That's just the way the structures are set up. And so we have to be extremely intentional about working against that 